Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening, one and all, and welcome to the 2016 British Academy Games Awards, supported by our friends EA, Sega, and Ubisoft. And have we got a show for you. This year, we've another fantastic lineup of who's who in the gaming world, our esteemed nominees, and of course, friends the world over watching the show as it's streamed live via Twitch. And I'm delighted to be back, ladies and gentlemen, after one year, the reign of terror of Rufus Hound is now over. <laughs> There is light across Arendal again. Uh, it is a delight to be here, by the way. I am here. Mark Hamill, by the way, isn't. Just calm down, right? Uh, <laughs> the people will be snapping their own necks off wondering he's filming something uh, and in Pinewood and couldn't make it. Uh, no spoilers. Uh, so. But there is, and, and I've, it's been a pleasure to be back, to just be back, not just here, to see these fantastic games that I've been enjoying basking for the last few weeks in the build-up to this, but also, by the way, because uh, I get to do the interview, the interview that I always do when I do that red carpet, I do the interview because I do the interview, and they always ask the same questions, and I always give the same answers. Uh, oh, all well, these, oh, and I go, well, it's very diverse. Oh, so diverse. Oh, even the range of games nominated for games of the year prove that this industry is broadening in its scope and its range is so huge. I mean, we just look at it randomly. Uh, the Witcher, for example, fabulous game. The Witcher Witcher, well done, those involved in The Witcher. The story of a man with a hideous facial scar riding on a horse across a war-torn landscape, engaging in adventures, as opposed to Metal Gear Solid V. <laughs> the story of a man with a hideous facial scar riding on a horse. Uh, in Fallout, there's no horse, but you can give him a scar. I mean, it really is. You've got a type, uh, which is very... I was waiting in the middle of Life is Strange. I only got a couple of chapters into it, and it's brilliant, well done, but I only got a couple of chapters into Life is Strange. I'm hoping at some point a man with a hideous facial scar <laughs> arrives in on a horse and she takes a photograph of him and wins a prize to go to San Francisco. That is my dream. <laughs> of how that game ends. May I say, on the back of that, some things. Firstly, as an industry, can I say congratulations, you have nailed horses. Horses <laughs> are done, you've got them. Listen, I look, we look back at something like Red Dead and go, Jesus, do I ride that blocky nonsense in the path? <laughs> Not anymore. Now they've musculature, it's fantastic. But on a more grim note, this industry has been mired occasionally in scandal and people being contro controversies about, about people's agendas and people's interests. And one thing has become evidently clear, by the way, as you play a, an immersion of games, uh, as I have for the last while, of the bill, of, even the best game nominations. What's with all the herbs? What is the obsession with getting us to collect herbs? What kind of secret herb-based agenda is the video game in? Are you in the pockets of Big Herb? That's the question I have. With whether it's The Witcher, this goes back to Resident Evil and the blue and the green and the red, you'd mix them together. Even Batman was finding plants in the middle. I played a lot of Batman, by the way, this year. I, was, I know it's not one of the best games, now, but I played a lot of Batman, which is unusual for me, because I don't play a lot of driving games. Uh, but <laughs> We'll play a lot of Batman this year. But Jesus, would you let it go with the herbs, right? I would like to see one AAA game that has proper evidence-based medicine within it, rather than <laughs> this ludicrous mix some wolfsbane uh, into this kind of nonsense. Right? So we've got that as an issue. They, it, and they've gone so broad. They've gone so broad that to a certain extent it's embarrassing to play. Metal Gear Solid 5 is the perfect example. Fabulous game. Again, congratulations to anyone involved in Metal Gear Solid 5. Wonderful piece of uh, gaming uh, software. But almost too much choice to accept that like people go oh how did you handle that mission oh how did you handle that because i know when i handle that mission oh you could do so much with it oh i i i went around the back and then i waited till night time and i sent a drone around the left uh, and then and then i waited for a lightning stretch to come from here and then i set up charges here that led to clap them and then everyone came to a pool area here and i shot them how did you do it i crawled and strangled that's all i did <laughs> And in every mission, I crawled, and then I got scared, and I waited, and then I strangled, and then I crawled out. That is how I played every level on Metal Gear Solid V, right? Too much choice, ladies and gentlemen. There's too much. There's a tyranny of choice at this stage. No, it is, it's remarkable. And you create within your industry, and I've often said this to you, you can do things that no other industry can do in terms of how you tell stories and how you draw those stories out, and just in terms of how you create visual effects. It is literally impossible to correct the beautiful effects that... I say literally impossible. Some of them aren't that difficult at all. Ah, oh, where, oh, shh. Where's your Bob gone? Oh, he's gone to the rapture. That's where Bob has gone. <laughs> oh, everyone's gone to the rapture.
OK, some of the effects are surprisingly easy to recreate on a cheap level, right? The, uh, yes, fabulous game, everyone gone to the rapture. The, uh, everyone kept quoting it, by the way, as it being Armageddon meets the archers. Uh, that was the quote I kept hearing, as if that was somehow twee. Have you, have you heard the archers recently? Uh, <laughs> Grim, nothing, nothing like the arches. It's hideous. Uh, it is about. We did want to do. We want to do. We want to recreate uh, various moments from the games. Uh, that was the most obvious easy one you could do. The uh, the uh, Fulton recovery device is difficult to achieve in a walled environment. Uh, to go thump, uh, up at the end. More difficult as a Witcher. I mean, we even bought the prop and everything. Uh, but there just was a lack of willingness. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, we've got the unicorn, but there's only me uh, and. No one wants to see that. Uh, there, is, there is a chance that many people in the room don't know what I'm referring to, but get the YouTube clip. It's really genuinely worth it. Uh, for things. So it, it, it's been a remarkable year, this. I'm, it, it, in all terms of all these, I mentioned what I've, me I've mentioned practically all the nominees at this stage. I've mentioned, oh, and you'll have Rocket League. That's the only one of the, of the best game nominees. Congratulations to Rocket League as well. Let's give them a big round of applause, along with all the others mentioned. <laughs> Nominated for best game this year. A nomination treated with a wry smile, I'd imagine, by the FIFA 16 team. Uh, going, what do you mean? We put women in. We did all sorts of physics for them. We did loads of effort. And it turns out you wanted rocket cars. I give up. Right? <laughs> As I said, I didn't play, I played the wrong game. There was an element of thing that I, in terms that I had to emerge, because during the year, I seemed to play the wrong game. Played a little of the Batman, played Bloodborne and Dark Souls 2, uh, which are fantastic games. Although, Although I've spotted that ultimately you walk around a kind of an area which you keep looping around and being killed by ghosts, and you have to learn the movements of the ghosts, like so in order to defeat them. It's just Pac-Man. Uh, <laughs> the entire Dark Souls thing is just Pac-Man with a kind of a horse that looks like a tree with spiders coming out of his eyes, or whatever the hell it is that's doing like, well, there's nothing major going on there. But actually, what I have learned in the last few years is that I have children, and that often limits the amount of games you'll play, and then they grow up, and what has happened is that they now are playing the games, right? So I actually get less time to play the big AAA kind of nominees because my children want to play, specifically LEGO Dimensions, big hello to anyone involved in LEGO Dimensions, or indeed to anyone involved in any of the Toys to Life for the Family nominations to spread that love around, right? Because it is a field of it. And watching your child, watching your, for me, watching my little one, just build a toy and then place it onto a pad and then for the toy to magically appear in the game is the most irritating, <laughs> just how dare you have this magic for you to take for granted at four, this is how you think the universe worked. I'm standing over my children going, I used to have to type games in from a magazine, right? <laughs> I, line by line, and then it wouldn't work, and I'd have to check. You don't know you're born at this stage. Can I, can I put Marty McFly on now? Yes, you can put Marty McFly on now. Anyway, oh, crossover would be great. Lego Dimensions, Dark Souls. Is there any chance you could bring those two together? Because I think a tree with spiders for eyes in Lego, that'd be fantastic. If you could do that for me, that'd be great. Like, I've, done, I've played loads of these games, but I know that there is an element as well within this industry that Next year is kind of the year that we know is going to be quite stunning. This has been one of the years where you've seen this generation absolutely working at its apex, and it's a, it's a pleasure to see these games. But the reality of uh, the virtual reality of, of what's going to happen over the next year is the thing that's going to be particularly exciting. And I know that I can see across the room, it was the queues a mile long to try out whether Oculus or the Sony want to try out these virtual reality. And yes, of course, it is going to be a revolution when we finally get this to work with a totally immersive situation with a mask and everything. There are, there are people for whom VR is going to be the greatest thing in the world. And obviously, I'm talking about burglars. For, bur <laughs> for burglars, there is going to be no greater joy than breaking into a house and seeing someone like me just lost in their own world. <laughs> They can take a break, they can rest, they can watch me for a while, and they can return to slowly denuding my house of valuables, including, most ironically, the television. That, that would be a particular joy if you're a burglar, to walk the telly out as you're there fighting burglars in your own front room. Yeah, I'll show you with my magic powers. Oh, where's everything gone? Uh, 
burglars or women who were contemplating divorce but just wanted just to check if it was the right thing to do will sit quietly watching you in your dream world going, this is not what I want. Uh, <laughs> but then we'll pack and you'll never know. That's, you leave and it'll be fantastic. This is the miracle which lies ahead of us and what joy it is going to be. And the best thing is, if you put the straps on, on all of those VR things really tightly, when you take them off, you will have a facial scar, just like the bit. <laughs> all you need is a horse and you'll be the hero you've always wanted to be. Ladies and gentlemen, are we ready for the awards tonight, are we? <laughs> of course we are. Of course we are. Well, gosh, this can sound a little bit cliched and perhaps lacking a little bit of credibility, but actually, genuinely was not expecting this. <laughs> I would, seriously, I think this year, the, 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 the nominees have been such, such huge quality this year, more so, I think, than a few years, that I'm genuinely kind of uh, humbled to receive this on behalf of uh, Todd Howard and, uh, and Bethesda Game Studios. And uh, this is the first time a Bethesda Game Studios have actually won.